Many of you have requested that I work with the African Dwarf Frog for quite a while now. I kept them well over 20 years ago at this point, but the time has come to do it again. I have a few of them here that are ready to go, but we should probably take a step back and go over their enclosure. As many other builds, it all begins with the enclosure. In this case, a beautiful SR Aquaristic Rimless Aquarium. It's constructed from low iron 8mm glass, held together with black silicone, and holds roughly 25 gallons or 96 liters. I've had it for years now, and I think it will serve as the perfect vessel for this project. A build is only as good as its scape, and that's especially important when making a paludarium. I have a great selection of dragonstone, which is an inert clay-based rock. They're ideal for making mountains and other features that jut out of the water and paludarium style setups. Generally, they'll arrive covered in clay dust, so I recommend washing them off before use. I also suggest keeping any of the dust leftovers from this process. It will come in handy later. Spiderwood will serve as a great accent to the stones. Their chaotic and gnarly appearance generally make for an interesting design. Additionally, all of the small twigs and fine textures improve the sense of scale alongside other elements. I dropped a piece of neoprene into the tank so I could experiment without cracking the glass. I began with the largest stone, which will allow me to get a sense of how the pieces should fit together. In other words, it will serve as the key element. It will dictate where I place the other items, like this driftwood. However, as I was doing this all, it was difficult within the tank. So I pulled out the scape dojo. This more or less is just a wooden box, full of sand that will allow me to work outside of the tank. You'll see that I also put up some string that represents the internal dimensions of the enclosure. Anyway, I resumed designing the layout within the confines of the dojo. I built a similar formation as before to start. I constructed another on the right side to juxtapose this one. Placing branches between these formations links them together and ties them in with the original branch. Adding a small formation near the front, like this, will improve the sense of depth. Tying even more branches into this all will make it even better. I'll do more with all of this later, but I think it looks strong so far. I don't want to deal with floating branches or things shifting around though, so I'll lock it together with expanding foam. Prior to that, I'll clamp the rocks together with wire. As the foam expands into the crevices, it could potentially knock the pieces over. This wiring will hold it together in the meantime. I applied foam between the contact points to secure everything as I've explained. This is how the foam looked a few hours later. It's expanded significantly and is honestly unappealing. It did exactly what I wanted it to do though, and as you can see it's rock solid. Plus, fixing it is actually quite simple. I'll just rip off the excess with my fingers and a pair of pliers. Now that's much better. The only persisting issue is that you can still see some of the foam. No worries, remember the dust from earlier? I can combine it with some super glue, as I've shown before, to conceal the foam and blend everything together. I simply apply some glue, sprinkle on the dust, and redistribute it with a brush. The result is something that appears very seamless that will hold everything together and keep the wood from floating once the tank is full of water. Since the pieces are combined, it was really easy to get it all back into the tank. I'll embellish the scape more shortly, but I should mention that I replaced the neoprene in the bottom with a sheet of corrugated plastic. Like before, this will keep the stones from creating pressure points and cracking the glass. 
To filter and turn over water in this tank, I'll use a CJ Micron. The cool thing about this filter is that this piece can be removed in order to install other components. Instead of this, I'll hook it up to a vinyl tube. To make that happen, I have a few lengths of rigid vinyl tubing, an elbow piece, and an end cap. With this modified filter, I can create a drip vine or something of that nature over top of the arch in the scape. I can also completely hide the filter behind the left side of the hardscape. As for the tubing, I'll simply wire it along the branch for now. I also have to make openings along the tube to create the dripping feature. I felt that the easiest solution was to cut slits in the top. Sure, they're gushing out now, but once it's covered with plants, it will create a gentle drip from the branch. I'll conceal it with Sus Fosser tongue that I'll wrap around the tube with fishing line. I would have preferred to use moss here, but there wasn't any available, and I just pulled all of this from a different enclosure. It will actually do well in this type of environment, but it's a lot less forgiving in the event the water stops running it would dry out much faster than moss. Regardless, it still has the same effect and looks awesome, don't you think? Since this is a paludarium style setup, I also want to include riparian or above the water plant growth. To start, I've selected a few staple plants such as Syngonium podophyllum and Hemigraphus raponda. I included a rabbit's foot fern as well for more texture. The formation on the right side doesn't have as much for the plants to rest on, so I tied their roots to the stone. They will gain stability in time, but this will suffice for now. I mixed in various aquatic plants that will happily grow above the rim, including Pogostem instalatus octopus and Hydrocotyl tripartita japan. The initial result of this all looks good and should suffice for now. I'll include a lot of foliage in the water feature as well, but I'll fill it with aqua soil and play sand prior to that. I poured the aqua soil mostly in the back and sides, which is where the majority of the plants will go. Then I went back and capped it all off with a thick layer of play sand to conceal the aqua soil and to make it easier to plant. I'll add some of the plants now and the rest when it's filled with water, starting with an assortment of Cryptocorini. I want a lush forest of these between the rock formations and in the foreground. Adding a lot of them makes them appear even cooler. I want to jungle around the rocks, and stem plants like Rotala indica will help me pull this off. I'm adding full length stems for now, but I intend to trim and replant them when it's full of water for denser plant growth. A little bit of Valisneria never hurts either. Two weeks later, and things look a little different. Most of it held up well, but the sugars in the wood made this pulp. It always happens with new spider wood, but luckily it isn't harmful. I'll address it later. In the meantime, I'll trim the plants as I explained earlier. I cut up the rotala a little and replanted the trimmed sections. I added some new plants in the back of the scape as well. Then I went through and sucked up as much gunk and debris as possible. Once empty, I moved the tank over to the rack and filled it back up. However, I wasn't crazy about how it looked. I decided to add more plants to better fill it in. After doing all of this, bits of aqua soil remained. Since they contain a lot of iron, these neodymium magnets should make them easy to remove. And by this point, I was able to get some java moss, so I mixed it into the drip feature. With all of that addressed, I could finally add the frogs. They were quick to enter the tank, but immediately after, they seemed very interested in what I was doing. 
This little one kept inching forward as I observed. My guess was that they were hungry, so I tried my luck with some freeze-dried tube effects worms. He gobbled them up immediately. I went through and actually got all six of them to eat within minutes of going into the tank, which was awesome. Feeding these little frogs is probably the aspect about them that's the most challenging, especially in a tank of this size. I personally think it will be best to manually feed them, like I do with the Surinam toads. That way I can ensure they're well fed, and it will allow me to be more involved and in tune with their care. It will also cut back on excess food, but there's sure to be a little, so it only makes sense to add a cleanup crew as well. I've selected Malaysian trumpet snails, zebra nerite snails, and a mono shrimp. These goofy little frogs are awesome, and I'm very excited to add them into the animal room. I think the bones of the tank are good, will function perfectly for the frogs, and showcase them beautifully. However, it will all look much better with time. The plants really need to establish, mature, and properly fill in the space. I should say that even though these frogs are adorable, they're not for everyone. If you're looking for a high energy enclosure that's engaging to watch, these aren't it. They like hiding amongst the foliage much of the time, and aren't extremely active. I'll likely add fish in here to contrast with that at some point, but I'm fine with the frogs for now. They're also pretty delicate due to their small size, so you gotta be careful when you're working in the tank. Even so, they will acknowledge your presence once you're close to the tank, and are curious about what you're up to. And even though extra care is needed to feed them, it's funny to watch, and they're fairly easy to care for. Just make sure to put a lid on the tank, or lower the water level so they can't escape. If given the opportunity, they'll gladly jump out. With some extra care and a nicely planted tank, these frogs will open up and surely steal your heart. They're silly, unique, and rewarding in their own special way. I mean seriously, how can you resist a face like that? Anyway, I think that's the perfect place to end this one. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the video, the frogs, and the build. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.